Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you shut off your hot and cold water supply and remove the drain hose from the wall. In this video we're going to show you how to change out the Whirlpool washer or brake shoe. It's going to be a very easy repair and it should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get a set of brake shoes. The brake shoes are what stop the tub at the end of the spin cycle. The main reason to be changing them out is if they failed and the tub isn't being slowed down or it's coming to an abrupt stop. In order to change the part, we have to take the washer apart. First thing we're going to do is go around back. Now that we're around back, we're going to put a towel down to catch any water that may come out when we take the hoses off. Make sure you label the hoses, which one's hot and which one's cold, so we don't mix them up when you put them back on. To get the hose off, we're going to use our pliers to loosen them up. Once you have it loose, you can just unscrew it by hand. Now that we have the fill hoses off, we can use our Phillips screwdriver to take out the two screws that hold the console down. You don't have to take them out all the way, you just have to loosen them up enough so that they come out of the cabinet. Once you have the screws loose, you can push the console forward a little bit to unlock it and then rotate it back up and out of the way. Then we can come around front and we have to take out these two gold locking tabs that hold the cabinet to the back wall. We're going to use a flathead screwdriver and just push down on it. Then you can flex forward so the clip comes out of the cabinet. Then you can unhook it from the back wall and pull it off the machine. Once you have the locking clips off, we can take the lid switch wiring harness off. There's a little locking tab that you can lift up on. You can use a flathead screwdriver if it's tight. You can pull the wiring harness out and set it aside. To get the cabinet off, we're going to lift up the lid and grab the lip of the opening right here and then put our foot down at the bottom of the machine and tilt the cabinet towards you until it's about a 45 degree angle or so. Then you can slide it back and off the frame. Once you have it off, you can set it aside. Now that we have the cabinet off, we can remove the tub cover. It's held in by some locking tabs that go around it. You want to press down above each one to kind of take the tension off and then pull out on it and then release it. And we can go around and do all the rest of them all the way around the tub. Once you have more release, you can lift the tub cover off and set it aside. Now that we have the tub cover off, you can take the agitator out. I'm just going to turn it around so we can take the cap off. If you have a fabric softener dispenser, you can just lift it off. To get the cap off, we're going to stick a small flathead screwdriver in here and turn it to release it. We can lift it off and set it aside. Now we can reach in and pull out the inner cover. If it's in there tight, you may have to reach in with a pair of pliers to break it free. Once you have it free, you can just lift it out and set it aside. Now we can take out the bolt that holds the agitator in. We're going to use a 7 16th inch socket with an extension and a ratchet to take it out. You may have to reach in and hold the lower half of the agitator so you can break the bolt free. Once you have the bolt out of the threads, we can lift out the agitator assembly and set it aside. Now that we have the agitator out, we have to remove the water inlet. We already took the hoses off earlier. All you have to do is lift up on it and release it once it slides up. Then you can drop the front of it down and then lift it off the back panel. Then we're going to rotate it out of the way and we're not going to take it all the way out, but we're just going to swing it out of the way so we can get the inner tub out. Now we can take off the hub nut. If you don't have the special spanner wrench, you can just tap it with a screwdriver to knock it free. We're going to use the spanner wrench. We're just going to set it down on. And you want to make sure you use a plastic hammer so you don't damage the tub. And we're just going to loosen it up counterclockwise. Once you have it broke free, you just turn it by hand. 
you can lift the nut off. Now that we have the nut off, we can lift the inner tub out. If it won't come off, it's probably because there's a bunch of gunk down in here from over the years. So you can put some penetrating oil down in here and let it soak in. And you may have to take a hammer and kind of tap around here to break anything loose and try to get the tub to come free. Once you have your oil soaking in there and you've tapped on it, you can also try to rock it back and forth to try to break it free. You can see ours finally broke free. Once you have it loose, you can pull it out of the washer. Now that we have the inner tub out, we have to take the drive block out. If yours is free, you can just lift it off, but if it's stuck on there, you may have to take a screwdriver and put it in between the opening here to kind of flex it to get it to break free. And you can also try to tap it up with a hammer. Once you get it free, you can lift it off and set it aside. Once you have the drive block out, if you see any buildup on the shaft, you want to just take a rag or paper towel and wipe it clean so that when it slides through the seal right here, it slides through with no problems. Once you have that cleaned up, we can go down below and take the pump off. To get the pump off, we have to remove the two clips that lock it onto the motor. We're going to use a flathead screwdriver to help lift them off. Once you have it released from the pump, we're going to turn it 90 degrees so we can pull it out of the motor. The bottom one comes out the same way. Now we can take off the pump. If when you're pulling on it, it doesn't come off, it may be leaking and the shaft is rusted to the pump. So you may have to get behind it with a flathead screwdriver to get it off. Once you get it off, you want to look at the back and if you see any evidence of it leaking, you want to change the pump too. Once you have it off, you can swing it out of the way so we can take the motor off. Now we can take out the wiring harness to the motor. It's got a locking tab on it. I'm just going to get behind it with a flathead screwdriver. Once you have it released, you can pull the wire harness off. Now we can take the motor off. Just like the pump, there's a couple of clips we have to release. They have some retaining screws in there. We're going to use a quarter inch nut driver to take the screws out first. Now that we have the screws out, we're going to use our flathead screwdriver to help pop the clips off. We're going to take the lower one off first. Now we can take out the upper motor clip. You want to make sure you support the motor so it doesn't fall as you're taking this out. And we're going to use our flathead screwdriver to pop it free. Once you have it free, we're going to drop the motor down a little bit and turn the clip 90 degrees so we can pull it out of the motor mounting plate. Once you have it off, you can set it aside. And we can grab the motor with both hands and lift it out. Now that we have the motor out of the way, we can reach in and take out any grommets that might be stuck on the motor mounting plate and the motor mounting clip. Once you have the grommets off the mounting plate, you can put them out on the motor so you don't lose them. Now we can remove this wire harness retainer. It clips the wire harness up to the transmission. We're going to use our needle nose pliers to compress it and pull it out. Once you have it released, you can just set it out of the way. Now we can put the washer on its back. You want to make sure that the inlet assembly is in the tub so it doesn't fall around. And then we're going to flip the console over. And we're going to lay it down and support it with a piece of wood so it doesn't lay flat on the floor and damage any of the fittings. To lay the machine down, we're just going to grab it and carefully lay it down. If you need to, get somebody to help you. It's kind of heavy. Now we're back at the bottom of the washer. We're going to use a half inch socket with a ratchet and an extension to take out the three bolts to hold the transmission on. Now that we have all the bolts out, we can pull the transmission out. You may have to shake it a little bit to get it to break free. Once you have it free, you can slide the shaft out and set the transmission aside. Now that we have the transmission out, we can take the basket drive assembly out. 
so we can change the brake shoes off of it. We're going to turn this whole assembly counterclockwise so it compresses the brakes and releases them. As you're turning it counterclockwise, we're going to pull it out. Once you have the brakes out of the drum, you can just pull the shaft all the way out and set it aside for now. We're going to take the brake shoes off in a minute. Once you have the basket drive assembly out, you can take some sandpaper or emery cloth and a paper towel and you want to make sure to get any rough edges off of here and make sure that you don't have any grease in here so when you put the new brake shoes on you don't get any contamination. Now that we have the basket drive assembly out we have to take the brake shoes off so we're gonna take the lower part and take all the pieces off of them. We have to remove this little C-clip right here so we can lift off this cam. We're going to get it behind it with a small flathead screwdriver and pop it off. Once you have it off, you can set that in the cam aside. Then we're going to take the spring off. The spring's kind of hard to remove with the pliers, but it's really not that strong. So we're just going to kind of compress it with our fingers and pull it off the brake shoes. Once you have that off, you can set it aside. Make sure you don't lose the end caps or the center piece. Next, we're going to remove the E-clip to hold the brake shoes on. Just going to take a small flathead screwdriver and pop it off. Once you have it off, you can set it aside. Now we can get the brake shoes off. We're just going to lift them off the post. And we also have to get them to release from these tabs. So we're just going to Kind of turn them at an angle and pull them out. Once you have the brake shoes off, you can set the spin tube aside so we can put the new brake shoes on. Here's the old brake shoes next to the new ones. If you already have these, great. If not, you can get them at AppliancePartsPros.com. Before we put the basket drive assembly back together, we're going to put a little bit of grease right on these rollers right here. They like to squeak a little bit. Once you have the grease on, we can put the basket drive assembly back together. To put the new brake shoes on, we're going to put this side on first. And you may have to move this little cam back and forth to make it easier to put both shoes on. And we have to make sure that it goes in between these two brackets and then we can mount it on the pin. So you may have to put it at a little bit of an angle and work it around and then you can drop it on the pin. Once you have this side on, you can do the other side. Again, if you have to, you can turn this and move it around. Once you have both shoes on, we can grab the E-clip and line it up, push it on with a small flathead screwdriver. Once you have that on, the brake shoe should be mounted and move freely. We can put the spring back on. Remember the spring has the center piece and the two end caps that go into these little tabs. So just like when we took it off, we're going to have to put one side on and then use our hand to compress it and put the other side on. Once you have it on all the way, we can put the cam back on. Cam has to go on this way. There's two pins that go into these two holes right here. Just have to line it up turn it over and set it on. Once you have that on, we can put the C-clip back in and use the flathead screwdriver to snap it in. Now that we have the basket drive assembly put back together, we can put it back in the washer. To put the basket drive assembly in, we're just going to line it up and push it up into place. 
Once you get it all the way up, we're going to turn it counterclockwise so everything compresses and you can push it all the way up so it's seated properly. Once you have it up there, you want to turn it so the cam is at 12 o'clock so it's lined up to put the transmission back in. To put the transmission back in, we have to make sure that the clutch spring isn't going to hit on the cam. So we're going to turn this over so it's opposite the motor plate. And when we lift the transmission up, it'll be at 6 o'clock so it doesn't interfere with the basket drive assembly. Once you have it in position, you can lift it back up and slide it into place. We're just going to lift it up and slide the shaft in. If you have to, you may have to shake it and wiggle it to get it to go all the way up. Once you have it in place, you can make sure that the transmission goes into the three mounting spots where the bolts go. Once you have the transmission in place, we can grab the half inch socket and ratchet and put the bolts back in. Now that we have the transmission in, we can set the washer back on its feet. Just want to carefully lift it up. Once you have it on its feet, we can rotate the console over and grab the block of wood. Now that we have the washer back on its feet, we can hook up the wire harness holder to the transmission. All you have to do is line it up and snap it into place. Now that we have the wiring harness clip in, we're going to put the lower mounting clip for the motor in. All you have to do is stick it in and turn it 90 degrees. Once you have it in place, you can just leave it sit until we put the motor in. Before we put the motor back in, you want to look at the coupler. The rubber part gets old and worn out, like this one where the hole's starting to elongate, and you know this is going to fail pretty soon. So you might as well change it while you have the motor out. Also, you want to line up this hole at the 12 o'clock position because we're going to put the other side of the coupler with the pin at 12 o'clock. So when we slide the motor in, it goes in nice and easy. Now we're going to turn the motor around and lift it up so we can put it into place. Once you have it slid all the way in, we're going to hold it for a second while we grab the upper mounting clip. We're going to drop the motor down a little bit just like when we took it out. And we're going to put the upper clip into the motor mounting plate and turn it 90 degrees and then lift the motor up and snap it into place. Once you have the upper one in, the motor will be supported so we can reach down and put the lower one in. To put the lower one on, all you have to do is lift it up and snap it into place. Once you have them both on, we can use the quarter inch nut driver to put the screws back in. Once you have the screws back in, we can reach around and grab the wire harness and reconnect it to the motor. All you have to do is line it up so it locks into place and you get a good connection. To put the pump on, we're going to lift it out and you're going to have to turn it over and make sure that the flats on the water pump line up with the flats on the motor shaft. If not, you may have to rotate it a little bit so that when you turn the pump over, they line up and you can push it all the way on. Once you have it all the way on, we can secure it with the mounting clips. To put the clips back on, we're going to push them into the motor and turn them 90 degrees so they lock in. Once you have it locked in, we can lift it up so it locks the pump to the motor. The upper one goes on the same way. Now we can put the drive block back on. You want to make sure that the tabs line up with the little cutouts so it sits all the way down on the shaft. All you have to do is set it down into place, make sure it's locked in. Then we can lift the water inlet out of the way so we can put the inner tub back in. To put it in, we're just going to lift it into place and set it down over the shaft. <laughs> 
once you have it all the way back down, we can put the hub nut on. We're just going to line it up and get it started. It's just a regular thread, so clockwise to tighten it down. We're going to use the spanner wrench to tighten it down, but same as when you took it off, you can use a screwdriver and a hammer to tighten it up if you don't have the wrench. Once you have it tightened down, we can remount the water inlet. To put it in, we're going to pick it up and turn it around. We're going to set these feet down into the openings in the back panel. And then as you lift it up, you want to make sure that the rear bulkhead sits in these little slots right here on the fittings where the fill hose is attached to. Once you have it in place, you can lift it up. Once it stops, we're going to have to lift up on the assembly and push back on it so this middle mounting tab catches. Once you have it there, you can push down a little bit to lock it in place, and then we can put the tub cover on. To put it on, we're going to line it up so the inlet is right in line with this opening, and we're going to push it all the way back into place. Once you have it on the tub, you want to go around and make sure the locking tabs are lined up and that all the tabs are on the outside of the tub. Once you're ready, you can push down above all these to lock them in place. Once you have the first one in, we can do the rest. Now that we have it installed, we can put the agitator assembly in. To put the agitator in, we're going to dump out the agitator bolt. We're going to use the 7 16 inch socket with the ratchet and the extension. We're going to put the agitator bolt into the socket and then we're going to lift it up into the agitator and make sure it goes into the hole. Once you have it lined up, you can lower the agitator assembly down into the washer. Once you have it down all the way, you can tighten down the agitator bolt. Once it starts to get tight, you're going to have to hold the lower agitator and we tighten it down. In order to make it easier to put the cap into the agitator, we're going to take some liquid soap and put it around the seal. This will help it go down in there and slide into place. If it gets hung up, you can turn the cap in order to get it to seat down in there properly. Once you have the soap on it, you can put it into the agitator. To put it in, all you have to do is set it down into the agitator. You want to make sure you get it all the way down and it's seated properly. Once you have it in there, we can put the agitator cap on. Whether you have the agitator cap or the fabric softener dispenser, all you have to do is line it up with the upper agitator and snap it back into place. Once you have it on, we can put the washer cabinet back on. In order to put the cabinet back on, we're going to line it up at the same angle we took it off. And we're going to hook the lip underneath the front. And we're going to set the cabinet down so that the tabs come through the holes in the cabinet. Once you have the cabinet set down, you can pull on the back panel to make sure that the plastic piece goes into the cabinet. Once you have both sides in, we can put the retaining clips on. To put the clip on, we're going to hook it onto the back panel and clip it onto the cabinet. Once you have this side on, we can do the other side. Once you have both clips in, we can grab the lid switch wiring harness and plug it back in. It can only go on one way. Just make sure it goes on all the way and locks in. Once you have the wire harness attached, we can close the console. Slowly let the console down and get behind it so we can line up the locking tabs. And Once you have them in on each side, you can pull back a little bit to lock them into place. And then we can use our Phillips screwdriver to tighten down the screws. To put the fill hoses back on, 
We're just going to line them up and make sure that they go on straight. You don't want to cross thread them. Once you have them snug, you can grab our pliers and tighten it down so you get a good seal and there's no leaks. Now that we have the fill hoses back on, you can plug the washer back in, turn the water back on, hook up the drain hose, and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.